It's an agriculture cooperation memorandum of understanding has just been signed by Agriculture Minister David Littleproud and the Indonesian Minister of Agriculture, Dr Limpo. And joining me live is the Minister for Agriculture, David Littleproud. Thank you so much for joining us today, Minister. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you met with key ministers. What was achieved on your three-day visit? Yeah, well, primarily it was the Memorandum of Understanding. And what this is, is while the free trade agreement is the architecture, this is the mechanics about how do we trade uh, in a more simplified manner, reducing some of the red tape, getting rid of the technical barriers. And so there are four key areas around what we've agreed to. And particularly for us, it was around plants and, uh, and our meat-based exports. And how do we make sure that some of those technical barriers, the issuing of permits by the Indonesian government is streamlined, which has been a challenge in the past uh, and making sure that we work through any of the scientific risk assessments on a biosecurity basis are achieved and achieved quickly. So um, there's a number of commodities that we're looking at, whether that be feed grain, lemons, carrots, potatoes, to complement what we're already sending there, which is over $4 billion worth. Uh, so the opportunities are enormous for Australian agriculture uh, because of the competitive advantage and the cost advantage in terms of sending our produce to Indonesia. So, Minister, how is this a win-win for, for both countries? Yeah, and look, Indonesia, we're never going to be able to feed all of Indonesia. There are 274 million people over there and we're only producing enough food and fibre for 80 million. But uh, what they see as a significant advantage uh, by having a secure supply chain from Australia is that they're value adding into much of their country. They're processing our wheat. In fact, I saw a shipment of wheat uh, dock as I was there that came from Melbourne uh, and that's going into noodles. Uh, that goes right across uh, one of the biggest manufacturers in Indonesia uh, actually sees uh, Australia as one of their biggest and best customers and want to continue to grow that. Uh, so this is about them having food security. And the food security isn't just necessarily about quantity, it's about quality in Indonesia. They, they get a lot thrown at them, but none to which is the standard that Australian producers are able to send in. So about making sure that we can streamline making it more competitive for Australian farmers to pick Indonesia uh, rather than other key international markets. Um, they understand is important. They're competing against other countries. And that's why these, these memorandums go to the very me mechanics of freeing up a lot of those red tape challenges. You were also in Indonesia to talk on the agriculture visas for Australia. How's progress going there? Yeah, look, uh, Indonesia is one of the, uh, the four countries that has been prepared to, to name themselves as one that we're in bilateral negotiations with. I met with the, what they call the manpower minister, uh, and she was very open about the fact that they are very keen and uh, to sign up. They have issues around exploitation that the AWU back here in Australia have been fanning uh, and have been sabotaging the process. Maurice Payne uh, and her department are in charge of this. Maureen, Maurice has given us a, a very strong indication that those negotiations are, are nearly finalised and that we should see some positive outcome very soon. She's given that commitment to both the Prime Minister and I. And then obviously Maurice will also work with those other countries and expand beyond that once we can sign these countries up. But you've got to appreciate these are sovereign countries uh, and they get to decide their own fate, whether they want to sign up to any visa, as we do. Uh, and we need to give them the confidence that their workers will be looked after, their citizens will be looked after. And I think Australia can, but unfortunately, when you've got some of your own saying you can't, it, it deludes the message that we're trying to send, deludes the confidence that we're trying to give them. Uh, and that's disappointing that the AWU would do that. Why do you think it's taking so long? I mean, obviously what you've just mentioned, but this was discussed back in September. Yeah, and, and the visa, in fact, has been up and going and available since the 1st of October. But we've had an active campaign where uh, Daniel Walton himself has even publicly said he will continue to do this. He's gone to visit uh, ambassadors here uh, in Canberra and told them explicitly that they should not sign up to an agricultural visa because their workers will be exploited. Uh, now, there is a small cohort that have done the wrong thing in agriculture, as there is in any other industry, whether it be hospitality, manufacturing. Uh, but, you know, that, that's, not the, that's not the case uh, generally uh, by farmers and how they treat their workers. They need them. And the fact that we're trying to put a pathway to permanent residency means that we are putting another protection layer there. And for the AWU to come in and to demonise Australian farmers in, in this generalised way is disgraceful. And, and it has had effect because these ambassadors and even the ministers are now asking questions. They have concerns about the fact that they're hearing all this noise of exploitation. 
uh, they are trying to sabotage this for what I don't know, because these jobs are market tested. Australians get first crack at them. And unfortunately, Australians haven't wanted to do this work. And farmers don't have the luxury to sit around and wait. It's got to get from their paddock to your plate. And so the AWU could be more constructive, could actually get out of the way. And I'm sure Maurice Payne would have clear air to finalise those negotiations if they did.